we go for an ice beam, they do stay in. Oh dear. Holy crap, we got the f How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're having a battle versus Raymond in the Smogon overused here. And it's been such a long time since I battled Raymond. He always whoops me, but you know what? It's fine. Stick around till the end for a bonus battle, and with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Raymond. So they're gonna lead off with Zamazenta. As I led off with Greninja. I led with Greninja because I was like, alright, they're probably going to expect the Glimora lead, so they might lead off with the Great Tusk, or the Landorus, or even the Ogre Pond. Maybe not the Ogre Pond, but something special, like, I don't know, something that can, like, hit clear the hazards, or do super fatal damage against Glimora. But anyway, Zamazenta is a terrifying lead for me, because I don't really have much to hit it, um, except from Metagross. So I'm going to have to go into Metagross. Now, I'm going to go into Shandy right now, um, because they're probably going to go for an Iron Defense, and I would love to trick them a Scarf. That's what I would love to do right now, trick them a Scarf, because Chandler does pretty well against their team, being a Ghost type against Goldengo. They actually go for an Iron Head, expecting maybe something else to come in there. Um, like, I don't know what else, but um, let's go for a trick and get this thing tricked real quick. So we go for a trick, we give the Zamazenta a Choice Scarf, so it can't be setting up no... Uh, iron defenses, and we'd have to play that game. They actually, um, what do they go for here? They go for, oh, we get a rocky helmet. That's going to be good, some chip damage. They go for a crunch, which is going to do a lot of damage to Chandelure. But now that we know they're locked into crunch, we can easily switch out into something that can take care of this. So I'm leaning towards the Greninja again, because it does take the crunch pretty well. Leaning towards the Glimora as well to get those toxic spikes up. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? No, Greninja is probably the best option for us. So let's go Greninja. And they, they actually withdraw the Zamazenta. So that's pretty cool. And um, what are they going to go into? They go into Manny. That's going to be the Great Tusk, right? It's got to be. Yeah, it is the Great Tusk. So, me going into Greninja here, because I figured, you know what? The only thing Greninja doesn't do super well against in their team is, to an extent, the Ogre Pond and also the Zamazenta. So, I was like, if they're locked into Crunch, I can get free switch with Greninja. The fact that they've switched this thing in is even better for me. So, they're probably not going to want to take an Ice Beam to the face. So, they probably go Ogre Pond here. So, I am going to go for the Ice Beam. Just because it'll still hit the Great Tusk if they do stay in really hard. But if they go into Ogre Pond, it'll get some nice neutral damage. So, we go for an Ice Beam. They do stay in. Oh, dear. And that is an Assault Vest Great Tusk. Holy crap, we got the Freeze. Oh, no. That's what happens when you say good luck, have fun at the start of a battle. I mean, I said good luck, have fun as well. But, oh, dear. Raymond, that is just so unfortunate. But that is an Assault Vest Great Tusk if I've ever seen one. Um, that is for sure. So what do we do here? I, I want to go for a Hydro Pump. So they withdraw. Are they going to go Ogre Pond now? That's the real question. They actually go into the Zamazenta once again. Because um, that thing is obviously Choice Scarf. But you know what? Raymond's a brilliant player. So even with this setback of being frozen on his Great Tusk. I still firmly believe that he's going to make a comeback here. So they probably go for a Body Press. I'm going to go Shandy. And that way, even if they do predict the switch into Shandy and they go for a crunch, um, they're still going to get some Rocky Helmet chip, which isn't the end. You know, it's a bit more damage on the Zamazenta. Zamazenta being a massive threat, obviously. So they go for the body press, so we do make the right play there, which is fantastic. Now, they pretty much have to go... Um, they are going to struggle to switch into this, because I can either go for a Fire Blast or a Shadow Ball. Um, either one's going to be really good. I think, personally, I think they go into Great Tusk, but um, I am going to... So they either go Latias to take a Fire Blast, or Ogre Bond to take a Fire Blast. No, no, Ogre Pond's neutral to Fire Blast. I think Fire Blast is the way to go here. So they withdraw the Zamazenta. Let's see what they go into. If they go Great Tusk, they go Great Tusk. If they go Great Tusk, does Fire Blast, like, D4 it? That's what I want to know. So we go for the Fire Blast. Let's see how much damage it does. And does it D4 them? It does D4 them. Okay, that was a good play. See, I told you you'd make a good play. I didn't even know that Fire... I thought if you used Fire Blast whilst you were frozen, it would D4 you. I didn't think he getting hit by it. But it makes sense. It makes sense. So anyway, do we outspeed? I don't think we outspeed. But do I have a switch in? We have Salamence. I'm going to go Salamence. I think Salamence is a good switch here because they probably go for a knockoff anyway, which will only knock off our Heavy Duty Boots. So we withdraw, we withdraw Shandy. And we're going to go into Salamence real quick. Get that Intimidate off, which is going to be nice. Draker X comes in. There we go. Intimidate comes through. And they go for a knockoff, which is fine. So they knock off our heavy duty boots, which is fine. Um, I could go for a Dragon Dance here now that the Great Tusk is weakened because it does really well against their entire team except from the Lando. But they probably bring the Lando in here on a dual wing beat. So if we assume they're going to switch in the Lando here to get the Rocky Helmet chip and the Intimidate off, 
We should switch out ourselves into something like the Greninja. But it's a risky play. I think I will go Greninja. So we withdraw our Salamence into our Greninja, predicting the Landorus to come in. Um, and even if they go for an Ice Spinner here, it should bounce off Greninja pretty well. Um, they do withdraw the, the Great Tusk, which is great. And they go into what? Pay to win. That's got to be the Landorus, right? No, it's the Goldengo. All right, Goldengo comes in floating in the air with its air balloon. We go for a Dark Pulse 100% of the time here because it hits everything really hard on their team. Even the Zamazenta doesn't appreciate it with its Choice Scarf. Um, they do go into Manny, the Great Tusk, which we know is a Salt Vest, by the way. It took the Ice Beam earlier. Um, we go for that Dark Pulse. That's going to definitely do a nice bit of damage. Not really. We go for an Ice Beam, though, 100% of the time here. And we just KO this thing and get our Battle Bomb boost. So we go for the Ice Beam. We take out the Great Tusk, which is... You know, you know, it's really unfortunate. Like, we wouldn't be able to do this right now. If we didn't get that Freeze on the Ice Beam, they would have close combat me in the face, like, straight away and KO my Greninja. We now get the Battle Bomb boost. We are in a situation that we shouldn't be in because of hacks. But you know what? That is the game we play. And Raymond's done really well to kind of deter that. Like, the Fire Blast play was really good. Zamazenta comes in. It is Choice Scarfed, so it does outspeed the Greninja still. Um, they can definitely go for a Body Press. I do kind of want to go for a Terrestrialization right now. Just to get the KO on this thing. I don't think I need Terrestrialization for anything else. So I definitely go for the Terra Blast here. So let's go for it. Let's Terrestrialize real quick. And they may expect the Terra Water. They may expect the Terra Water, but we Terra Electric. Um, body press is still going to do a lot of damage to us, but we should still be able to take it as Terra Electric because it's neutral. So they go for a body press. We take it. We do take it because they didn't have that defense boost anymore from the uh, Intrepid Shield or whatever it's called. Dauntless Shield. We go for that Terra Blast. Taking out the Zamazenta, which is fantastic. This Greninja, through hacks, has just made the impossible possible. But they still have Terrestrialization on their side. They could easily go Ogre Pond and Terrestrialize into a pure water type. They go into Bianca, which I'm assuming is the Ogre Pond. Latias. They probably Terra here, right? Did they Terra? Did they Terra into a Fairy type to go for a Calm Mind? I think they do. Let's go for a Hydro Pump. I think they Terra here. 100% of the time they Terra. So they do Terra. What type are they going to Terra into, though, to take a Dark Pulse slash Ice Beam? Probably Fairy, if I had to guess, right? Yeah, Fairy. So we made the right play by going for a plus one Hydro Pump here. It should definitely put a stop to the Latias' plans um, making this prediction. So we go for a Hydro Pump. We don't miss, which is nice. And it does over half, which is fantastic. They actually go for a Terra Blast, though, instead of saying up, which is fair enough. That's going to take our Greninja. So that was a good play on, on um, Raymond's part. Um, but I think we made the right play by going for the Pump because it has weakened the Latias to the point where we can bring in something else to take it on. Something that outspeeds it. Um, for example, we could go into Metagross and Bullet Punch. That'll bait in the Goldengo or the um, Landorus, but still. Um, we could also go Glimora and set up Stealth Rocks if we want to, or Mortal Spin it. I do want to get Stealth Rocks up, but I don't think it's like a necessity right now. So I think I will go Metagross instead. So we'll go Metagross. And if they bring Lando in, which I'm assuming they will, we could just go for a knockoff here. I think we go for a knockoff, expecting the gold angle or the Lando to come in so we can get rid of that heavy duty boots. Uh, he sorry, the Rocky Helmet. Um, I don't think they can one-shot us, so if they do, like, they, if they did stay in and attack us, which they wouldn't because they have no moves to heals, um, we could just bullet punch the next turn. So they go into Jafar, which is going to be the Lando, as expected. It gets the Intimidate off, but it's clear body, so it doesn't really matter. We get a nice knockoff off, which is going to get rid of a potential Rocky Helmet. There we go. So leftovers is gone. So it's not Rocky Helmet, it's leftovers. That's good. That means we don't get any damage. So, now what do we do? I think we have to sack off Shandy. So, I'm going to sack off Shandy. There is the chance they go for a U-turn here to predict the switch. But that'll give them some Rocky Helmet shit, which would be nice. So, we're going to good old Shandy here. And uh, they go for a Stealth Rock. So, that's, that's a good play. That's going to really hinder our team a little bit with switching and stuff. I should probably try and get my Stealth Rocks up as well. But I just haven't found the opportunity to do it. So, now I'm going to go for a Fire Blast. Because it'll definitely KO the Landorus. If, if it's Defensive Landorus, we outspeed it. Fire Blast comes through. We do our speed. And that's going to cleanly nearly take out the Lando. They go for an EQ though. That's going to finish us off. So Shandy did get to do something. But not quite enough to warrant a thumbnail spot. That's for sure. I don't know. I'm, I've been struggling recently with thumbnail Pokemon. Like a lot of people have been saying, oh, clickbait title. I'm like, yeah, well, whatever. Um, I think we go into Salamence here. Salamence could 
After a Dragon Ants potentially do some stuff, Stealth Rocks do dig in, obviously. We do get the Intimidate off. I don't think we can afford a Dragon Ants because they could have Stone Edge. I think in this instance, we go for a Dual Wing Beat 100% of the time. So Dual Wing Beat comes through. That's going to take out the Landorus um, nice and powerfully. We aren't at Moxie, so we don't get any boost, but it's fine. As Landorus going down is still great. Salamence gets a KO, which is nice. And Jafar goes down. Bianca comes in, which is going to be the um, Latty ass. We know that's going to hurt us quite a bit. Um, I think our best bet is going to be the Metagross switch. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Metagross. Metagross does do really pretty well against their entire rest of their team, except from the Goldengo. So I'm kind of... Oh, it's Metagross floating. Wow. It tried to float to avoid the Stealth Rocks, but it didn't work. They actually trick us. Oh, it's a trick set with Latias. That's pretty cool. What are they going to trick us there? They get the leftovers. We get the choice specs. That's no good. So they get a serving of leftovers, which is kind of annoying. But now, if they have a recovery move, which they probably don't if the choice specs. Um, if they did have a recovery move, they could go for it. But um, that's unfortunately not the case. So I do want to go for a Psychic Fangs or a knockoff. Expect, But I, I, I don't know. Hmm. What we go into is going to lock us into that. So we need to be careful what we do here. I think I will go for a Psychic Fangs. They withdraw. Are they going to go Goldengo? We break the air balloon at least with the gold dango. Hero, Hero Pond. Oh, that's going to be the Ogre Pond, right? Yeah, definitely. We haven't seen that yet, so it's the only nickname I don't know. So Psychic Fangs come through. Does a lot of damage, which is great. We go for another Psychic Fangs 100% of the time here. Because even if the gold dango comes in, we break the air balloon, which is nice. So uh, um, our Glimora can come in and earth power it. They withdraw. Okay, so they're going to go gold dango, right? Why is Metagross just floating like that? That's crazy. Pay to win comes in. That's the Goldengo. I love that nickname for Goldengo, actually. Now that I think about it more, it's like a really good nickname. Psychic Fangs does come through. does a bit of chip damage, which is nice. Um, Air Balloon's going to pop. We can still use Metagross for later. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go Salamence. Just because A, outspeeds. And B, if they up a nasty plot, we can outspeed them and KO with them with Earthquake. So I am going to withdraw in Salamence real quick. Um, I think that is the way to go here. So Dracorex comes in. Point Stones do dig in. They can probably just take us out of Shadow Ball if they want to. But I feel like they set up a nasty plot. They don't. They go for a Shadow Ball. That's good. Um, so that's only good because we no longer have to worry about the likes of the uh, nasty plot. Um, so Ogapon can come in. And even though it doesn't KO with Ivy Cudgel, it can potentially do a lot of damage. So um, I think... I think the play here is to go... I want to go Glimora and Earth Power. But I'm going to go into Ogre Pond instead. And the reason I'm going to go into Ogre Pond is because, A, I don't think they switch... I, they, I think the obvious play for them to do is to switch into Ogre Pond, in which case I should go for a U-turn. But I feel like Raymond doesn't do that here. And he actually expects the U-turn and stays in. So I'm going to go for an Ivy Cudgel. They do withdraw. Okay, so never mind. That's that's the play they're going to make. So they're going to withdraw into the... Uh, probably the Ogre Pond, right? Hero Pond comes in. It's got that Water Absorb. Um, luckily, we're in the same boat, but they do get some recovery, which is kind of annoying. So that was that was a good play by Raymond there. I should have predicted it, but, you know, it's hard to predict these things sometimes. So anyway, comes down to a speed tie here. Do I go for a Horn Leech? I go for a Horn Leech because that way, even if they do hit first, which they have done, we can get some health back from hitting them. So it's going to be like a never-ending cycle. So we go for the Horn Leech. Obviously, it does no damage. Well, it does, it does a lot of damage, but like... It doesn't recover enough to where I can warrant staying in here. So what I'm going to do here is instead, I'm going to go into um, I'm going to go into Metagross expecting a Horn Leech. So we'll withdraw into Metagross, expecting a Horn Leech here. We're going to good old bot. Let's see if he's flying again. No, he's not. Okay, never mind. Point stones dig in. They go for a Horn Leech once again, which is fine. I do want to keep Ogapon around because it does bop that Goldengo in the face with an Ivy Cudgel, which would be nice. Um, and I think I go for another Psychic Fangs here. Or a Heavy Slam. Now, I, I think I could go for a Knockoff or a Psychic Fangs. I think I will go for a Psychic Fangs. Because they probably stay in an attack, which they have done. And I know we can take one of those, which we have done. So we go for a Psychic Fangs. Takes out the Ogre Pond nice and cleanly. Um, no thanks to the choice spec, since that boosts special attack, not physical attack. Bianca comes in, which is going to be the Latias. So can Latias finish us off? It's not got his choice specs anymore. It's probably got Draco Meteor, Psychic, Luster Purge, and Terror Blast with Trick. So do we go for a Psychic Fangs? Or do we go for a Psychic Fangs? They go for a Terror Blast. Let's see if this KOs us. I think it does, but I don't really see any other alternative. 
Yeah, it does KO us. So I guess potentially we could have kept Megaros around to go for a bullet punch, but that would give the Goldengo a free switch in, which they could nasty plot on, um, which wouldn't be very good for us at all. Um, so now we need to think of a different way to KO this Latias. So I'm leaning towards the Ogre Pond. I think the Ogre Pond is the way to go. Because I think Ogre Pond and Latias are at a speed tie. So we have to win the speed tie in order to win the game. Otherwise, they win with Latias. So we go for an Ivy Cudgel 100% of the time here. Ivy Kudra comes through. Yes, we win the speed tie. If it is a speed tie, I don't actually know. I can't remember Latias' speed. Is Latias base 110? I think it's 110 like Ogre Pond. I think. But we won anyway, so um, we've still got the Goldengo to fight off. But, like, I'm pretty confident we can take on Goldengo with our Glimora and our Ogre Pond. So, Ogre Pond comes in. We smack it in the face with an Ivy Cudgel for, for sure. Ivy Cudgel comes through. Ogre Pond goes hard. Nearly gets the KO. They go for a Shadow Ball, though. That is definitely going to take out Ogre Pond from here, unfortunately. And it all comes down to what set they are on the Goldengo, really. Because Glimora, my Glimora is max speed timid. But I can't remember whether or not we outspeed Goldengo. If we do, then it's GG. If we don't, then it's GG. Either way, this is the deciding turn. So let's go for a Earth Power right now. We do outspeed. Okay, there we go. Glimora takes out Goldengo. That is going to be the game. So GG Rayman, that was a pretty good, good game. I enjoyed that one. There was a bit of hacks with the Great Tusk Freeze. That was pretty funny, but not funny at the same time because it's unfortunate. But GG Rayman, that was a really fun one. I enjoyed that. And we have ourselves a bonus battle. Today we're on about versus Joey Fontaine. That's right. The man, the myth, the legend. And he's bringing that classic, like it's not a Joey Fontaine video if he doesn't bring a Sun team. Like it's always a Sun team. But he's got gouging fire on it this time. It has been a while since I battled Joey actually. So I'm pretty excited for this because he normally wins and he normally never shuts up about it for months. Um, so I'm hoping I do win actually. So yeah. Stick around to the end for the rental code for the team. And with that being said, uh, let's jump into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Joey. So he's going to lead off with Slow King as I led off with my Glimora because I was like, you know what? Stealth Rocks will be really nice this game. The Gouging Fire and the Torkoal are both weak to it. Um, so let's get the Stealth Rocks up straight away and then we'll switch out because I don't want my Glimora to go down because that Torkoal and potentially the Hisui and Lilligan are rapid spinners. So we get the Stealth Rocks up, which is great. Let's see what this um, Glorian Slow King does. Goes for a chilly reception, maybe. Psychic Noise. Interesting. So Psychic Noise comes through. It takes us down to our Sash, which is unfortunate. And we can no longer heal. It was a crit. Not that it really matters, because it would have probably taken us down to our Sash anyway. Going to switch out into my Metagross. Um, Metagross is just in case... I was going to go Greninja, but they might predict the Greninja and go for a Sludge Bomb. So I figured Metagross is like best of both worlds. It resists Psychic Noise. It's immune Sludge Bomb. They do go for the Sludge Wave, predicting maybe the Greninja to come in, but it doesn't work on good old Bot. So now I can go for a free knockoff, knock off something's item real quick. And there we go, knockoff comes through. Solid bit of damage to the Slow King, which is great, as uh, they uh, knock off the Assault Vest, which is nice. So they go for a Flamethrower, which is going to sting because that has probably got more special attack investment than I would have liked. And they burn me, which is very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. So that is very unfortunate for us. Luckily, if their Torkoal is their Rapid Spinner, we have the perfect spin blocker in Chandelier, being immune to both Body Press. Rapid spin and resistant to fire blast. So that's not too bad. So uh, let's go for a heavy slam now to KO this slow king. They do withdraw the slow king. Are they going to go the Torkoal to set up the sun? I would guess so if I was them. Torkoal comes in to set up the sun. Fair enough. In comes the Torkoal. They get some stealth rock chip, which is nice. And uh, gets the drought up as well. If they're heat, they are heat rock because they, they haven't got heavy duty boots. Heavy slam does no damage, obviously. Um, but we could still potentially use the Metagross later for Bullet Punch on, like, one of the Chlorophyll users. If it's, like, for example, if it's Focus, Sash, Isui, Lilligan, then we definitely want to keep uh, Metagross around. So I'm going to go into Shandy now because Shandy can definitely wall this Torkoal to no ends of the Earth. If only I was Flashfire. If I was Flashfire, then I would be the perfect Torkoal switch in, but, you know, I'm not. So Shandy comes in to block that Rapid Spin, and they do, in fact, go for a Stealth Rock. So Stealth Rocks are up on our side of the field, which is unfortunate, but... We do have a Hazard Clearer, which is fine, um, in the Glimora, which is unfortunately going to go down when it switches in. So we don't have a Hazard Clearer. Ah, that's unfortunate. So um, we could Shadow Ball here. They probably switch into Meloetta, if anything. So I'm going to go for a Fire Blast. They do withdraw the Torkoal. I think Fire Blast is a great move to go for if they go into the Meloetta. They do go Meloetta. Um, if this thing's a Sword Vest, which I doubt it is if it's Glorian Sloking was, it's not Boots. It might be Leftovers. We missed the Fire Blast in the Sun, which is very unfortunate. 
Um, so I'm going to have to switch out. I, I can't stay in against this thing. I'm going to sack off Glimora. Just because I don't know what this uh, Meloette is going to do. If it sets up a Calm Mind, we're going to be kind of boned. So we need to be really careful with the Meloetta. So we'll go into Gita, the Glimora. Let it go down to the Stealth Rocks. Nice and shiny. There we go. Stealth Rocks take it down. And Gita goes down. That's unfortunate. But it is what it is at the end of the day. Let's see what they go for. They go for a knockoff. So they were trying to knock off my Chandelure, which is dirty. Not really dirty, but... Let's go Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond's not too bothered about the uh, Meloetta. We can go for a Horn Leech or, an or a U-Turn, potentially. U-Turn's probably the best option because it'll do a lot of damage. We could also Swords Dance as well. But I feel like they switch out here, not wanting to take a Horn Leech or a Knock Off or something. So they do withdraw the Meloetta. We went for the right play by going for U-Turn here. And they're going to go into Gouging Fire, which is a very good switch into Ogre Pond. In the sun, especially being um, reduced power on the Ivy Cudgel, Horn Leech is resistant, and so is U-Turn. So they get the attack power, which is good. They're not speed, and it also gets the Stealth Rocks, which tells me they are not heavy duty boots. Obviously, obviously Jack, obviously Jack. So anyway, what do we do against this thing? So Gouging Fire, we do our speed with Salamence. So I'm going to go Salamence. We'll get the Intimidate off as well, which would be great. And Earthquake kind of hits everything on their team really hard. Um, so we go for the Intimidate, and what I can do here is I could go for a Dragon Dance expecting the... I think I go for an Earthquake, because if they go for a Burning Bulwark, Earthquake won't burn us. And also, they won't be able to, him to predict the Dragon Dance and go for a Dragon Claw. So I'm going to go for an Earthquake right now. They do go for a Dragon Claw. They actually outspeed us, but the Intimidate made us live, which is great. We go for an Earthquake. Gouging Fire, I thought he was base 90. It must be base 100 or higher. That's wild. I, you know, looking at Gouging Fire, you wouldn't expect it to be base 100. I really need to learn my speed tiers because there was like two poke one, like Latias against Raymond. I was like, what speed tier is it? I need to learn my speed tiers more. Definitely need to learn my speed tiers more. So just out of fear of a, um, a fighting dance here, I'm going to go for a dual wing beat. And um, they do go for a nice spinner though, which is fine. That's going to take out Salamence. So Salamence goes down, but Gouging Fire is out of the way, which is great. And um, thanks to the Intimidate, we were able to take a Dragon Claw, which I didn't think we would take anyway because of the Protosynthesis and attack, but it's whatever. Uh, this thing's a threat though right now. That's for sure. I don't think it can do much to Metagross. So I kind of want to come in and bullet punch it to break a potential for Sash. Because the last thing I want to do is go into Chandelure to Fire Blast it and then it's Focus Sashed. So, oh no, with the Stealth Rocks. Anyway, I'm, I'm, what is wrong with me today? Something's wrong with me today. I don't know what it is. Metagross is floating again though, which is cool. Let's go for a Bullet Punch and just get some damage off on this Asuian Lilligant. I think that's probably the best. So we go for a Bullet Punch, which is going to do minimal damage, but it's still damaged nonetheless. And they go for an Axe Kick, which could have missed. And it doesn't take us out, but unfortunately the Burn is going to take us out. So their Axe Kick and not close combat, which is interesting. And the Sunlight's finally faded as well, which is amazing. Oh wait, we live because of the Leftovers. That's pretty cool. So this turn, just in case they decide to go for a fighting, uh, fighting Dance, expecting us to go for a Bullet Punch again, I'm going to go for the Psychic Fangs. They do go for an Ice Spinner to take us out, though, which is fine. That's going to cleanly take out Megros. It's going to no longer float. <laughs> they all float down here, as uh, Pennywise once said. So this is actually not a bad situation for us to be in because the Torkoal, the Sunlight is gone. So we can outspeed this thing with Greninja and potentially get a KO with the Ice Beam. The Glorian Slow King's Assault Vest is gone. So we might actually be all right. So let's see how this plays out. Let's, um... Let's go into... I kind of want to go into Ogre Pond and U-Turn. I also kind of want to go into Greninja, though. I think I will go into um, Ogre Pond because either way, no matter which choice they go for, they definitely switch into Torkoal. That's for sure. So I think it's better if we go into Ogre Pond and we, uh, we, we go for a U-Turn here. I think that's for the best. So they withdraw the Lilligan, which is fine. They're expecting maybe a play rough, or they just know they can switch Torkoal in just fine. So they bring Torkoal in. Torkoal's going to get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great, which means it can be taken out with the Hydro Pump from the Greninja. Um, and we could potentially get a Battle Boost. So let's go for the U-Turn, get some Chip Damage on the Torkoal, switch back out to Greninja, and hopefully Greninja with a Battle Bond Boost can outspeed Venusaur and um, probably will outspeed Hisui and Lilligan, but that's fine. Um, because they probably... Mm. Do we go into Shandy? Now, let's go into Greninja. Let's go into Greninja, like so. And because their Axe Kick on the Lilligan, we can actually switch the Chandelure into it pretty easily. So, I am going to go for... I want to go for a Dark Pulse, so I don't want to miss the Hydro Pump. But I just kind of want to go for a Hydro Pump. I'm going to go for a Hydro Pump. 
Screw it. They actually switch out of the Torkoal. What are they going to go into, though? Lilligan. Lilligan's a good switch. Lilligan's a good switch because it can definitely take a Hydro Pump, no problem. Um, as we go for the Hydro Pump. I should have gone for an Ice Beam, really, but... I didn't actually think they'd go into Lilligan straight up. But let's go into Shandy. Shandy can definitely take an Axe Kick, that's for sure. Even though they probably go for a Leaf Blade. But I feel like they're Fighting Dance, Ice Spinner, Axe Kicker, and then Leaf Blade. I feel like that's the set they've got, which means Shandy does kind of wall it. So we'll bring Shandy in. He gets some Stealth Rock Chip, which is unfortunate. They do go for a Solar Beam. Solar Beam? Joey misgend his Pokemon. He's meant to put Blade on there, not Beam. What a fool. He wouldn't have done too much damage anyway to the Chandelure, which is fine. Um, now, looking at their team, there is no reason for me not to tap Fire Blast in the sun. They go for an Ice Spinner. They've gave up on the Lilligan because it's got Solar Beam and not Solar Blade. They've realized that. We go for Fire Blast. We connect the Fire Blast. It KOs the Lilligan to an, like, about three times. Lilligan goes down. It was a crit as well. So made that three times, five times or six times. Lilligan is down. So we were a bit of a disadvantage against Joey Fontaine um, earlier, but we're all right now. So Meloetta comes in. Now, here's the thing. What do we do here against Meloetta? Because we know it's not going to be a Salt Vest, right? Surely not. Do we, uh, if they go for a knockoff, we could go into Ogre Pond. I think we go Ogre Pond just purely because they're going to go for a knockoff and Ogre Pond can't be knocked off. So we'll switch into Ogre Pond. Obviously, knockoff will still hurt us, but it won't actually knock off our item or get that boost in power. Because Ogre Pond's technically not holding an item, it's wearing an item, if that makes any sense. But anyway, they go for a knockoff, which isn't going to do too much damage to us. Can't knock anything off. We 100% of the time go for a... Uh, do we go for a Swords Dance or do we Horn Leech? I think we Horn Leech here. I think we Horn Leech. They, they probably expect a U-turn and they don't switch out. So they get, we go for a Horn Leech that does a lot of damage to the Meloetta. Gets some, some nice recovery back as so. And um, they go for a Relic Song, which is... Ooh, that means they're the Pirouette form, which is fast. Fast. Very fast. That's uh, frustrating. So they are now a physical threat. They probably go for a close combat, which means we should switch Chandelure in. We're going to have to switch Chandelure in here. We're going to have to switch Chandelure in here. Because they're probably going to go for, not a knockoff, but like, they either go for a psychic noise. No, not psychic noise. A close combat or something else. So I'm hoping for the close combat. They go for the close combat. There we go. So, because Pirouette Form Meloware, if you didn't know, is always physical. Always physical because it's got such a high physical attack and speed that it's just amazing. So um, we have to go for a Fire Blast here. But there's no other option. We could go for an Energy Ball, but there's no point. There we go. We outspeed KO the Meloetta. Ogre Pond now is in a better position. We just need that Sun to disappear. But I think the Sun goes out this turn. Yeah, it does. Which means they can just bring Torkoal back in and get a full set of turns for that Venusaur. I think Venusaur does win the game, but they actually go Slow King, which is interesting. So Slow King doesn't have an Assault Vest anymore. We can't switch Chandelure back in, so we may as well just go for a Fire Blast here and get as much damage off as possible. As there we go, it comes through. It does a lot of damage to the Slow King. They go for a Sludge Wave, and that's going to take us out. So there we go. But now, I'm, I'm actually pretty confident in Greninja. I think Greninja with a Battle Bond boost outspeeds Venusaur with a Chlorophyll boost. I have to kind of hope and pray, but I'm going to go for it because they can't really switch. If they switch Venusaur into a Dark Pulse, I just go for an Ice Beam. If they switch Torkoal in, they, we still get the KO and get the Battle Bomb boost. So I think Greninja could win this for us here. So they withdraw the Slow King anyway to get that um, uh, Regenerator, which makes sense. And they're going to go into Torkoal to let it go down to the Stealth Rocks and my Dark Pulse. There's the Stealth Rocks. Gets the Sun up. We go for a Dark Pulse now, which is going to KO the Torkoal. Give us a Battle Bomb boost. And now it all comes down to Greninja. So Greninja is the be-all and end-all in this when it comes to whether we win or not. Because here's the problem we've got. Right, so. Do we Terra? That's the real question. If we Terra, we can't Terra with Ogre Pond. Now, the problem with that is, if they bring Venusaur in here like they have done in the sun, then Ogre Pond can't Terra into it. Because here's the thing. They go for a Sludge Bomb on Ogre Pond. Right? But if we Terra, we turn into a pure water making neutral and we get a special defense boost, which means we might live the Sludge Bomb. But we might outspeed here. Let's go for an Ice Beam and find out. So they're going to Terrestrialize. Ooh. Okay. What are they going to Terrestrialize into? Fire type? Probably. That means Hydro Pump wouldn't have KO'd anyway. Ice. 
Terra Ice. Interesting. So that is a game changer for them. We do our speed, but it's not going to do enough damage. They go for a solar beam. That's going to cleanly take our Greninja right now. I think even if we Terra Electric there, the solar beam would definitely take us out. Still. So I think it comes I think it's good that we've saved our Terra for Ogre Pond. I think I think if we have any chance of winning it's that they go for a sludge bomb instead of a solar beam. But then again, stealth rocks. I say we try it and we go for a horn leech to get our health back. I think that's the only way we get around this. So we terror. The terror is probably obvious because we haven't terrored yet. So it's like, it's pretty obvious we're going to terror and get that special defense boost. But there we go. We got that big mask. I think we just lost to Joey Fontaine again. We get that special defense boost, which is nice. They go for a sludge bomb. Okay, we might have a chance. No, never mind. We don't have a chance. Never mind. GG, Joey. That was a fun one. It was a nice close one as well. We've had two fun, nice, close games. Like, the Raymond one was really fun. There was some hacks, and I was very lucky in Raymond's game, but it was still a fun one. And that battle against Joey, I hate to say it, but GG, Joey, that was a really fun game. Thank you for the battle. I really, I, I mean that. But anyway, as usual, here is the team. Try it out if you want to. Use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Let me know if you do use it. I want to hear your success stories. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.